Good day, everybody. This is Chris, the Ancient Scholar. And what I wanted to do real quick is talk about the two different types of venomous snakes that we run into in North America. The Basically, they fall into two different categories of the, the genus, the, the crotalin um, and the elapid, or the elapidae for, uh, we're talking multiple types, and the crotalin A as well. I, I, I tend to call them the crotalids and the elapids. Uh, the terminology is synonymous, at least as far as these particular videos are concerned. So let's go ahead and talk about the elapids. The, the elapids uh, include a lot of well-known snakes, such as uh, cobras, for example. Cobras fall into this, uh, this uh, genus as well, but we don't typically find cobras here in North America. However, uh, people that uh, deal with exotic snakes, either uh, illicitly or above the board, if you will, uh, occasionally we do run into uh, cobra bites due to uh, collectors, both professional and uh, non-professional collectors of uh, uh, non-indigenous snakes, and occasionally uh, through zoos. Uh, so what is the major type of elapid that we run into in the United States or the North America? Well, typically these include the coral snakes. The coral snakes are the, the big ones that we run into. Uh, of which we have the eastern coral snake and the Texas coral snake. And the coral snakes, like the elapids, have uh, similar morphological characteristics to them. Uh, when you look at the elapids, um, uh, they kind of have a, 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 an elongated, uh, smooth head. And I'll just show you a crude picture that I drew here. So... Uh, you know, the, the kind of elongated, kind of smooth. Okay, smiling a little bit. He's got a little nostril there. You can see they have a, a, a round pupil, a roundish pupil. And uh, when it comes to the coral snakes, they have a very characteristic pattern. And this is looking at the dorsal aspect of the snake. So uh, if you imagine that the snake's crawling around there and you actually look at the dorsal surface of it, uh, this is a, a, a representation from my great art skills. And this is uh, typical of venomous coral snakes. They have this, this large, this enlarged scale pattern right along the, the center, the, the midline of the dorsal surface. And uh, the color, that has a very characteristic color pattern. You have this large red ring, and then you have these yellow rings. The yellow rings tend to be much thinner. And then you have these black rings, and uh, there's kind of this saying that if the red touches the yellow, that particular snake will kill a fellow. So red touches yellow, kill a fellow. Um, and then if you have red touches black, venom lack. Uh, typically that is when you have these uh, red and black and, and yellow stripes, that might be a, a more innocuous type of snake. But when you have a snake that looks like this, has kind of this elapid um, morphology to it, you have a red and you have yellow stripes, uh, you, you have these large red stripes, these small yellow stripes, these large black stripes. Um, that is highly characteristic of the coral snakes. And the coral snakes primarily contain neurotoxic venom, in fact, that is the primary concern when it comes to bites by these snakes. Now, bites by cor coral snake bites are very rare. They only account for about 5%, um, give or take, of all the different types of bites that we, uh, of snake bites that we run into um, in the United States, whereas the other uh, genus of uh, snakes uh, really is a majority of snake bites, over half, 55, 60 percent of all snake bites, venomous snake bites in particular, come from this genus. And this is the, uh, the these are the, um, not the elapids, but the crotalids. And the crotalids, you just think of the term pit viper. The crotalids include all of the varieties of pit vipers, of which there are uh, over about a hundred different uh, species of pit vipers uh, in the United States. I'm not going to be able to talk about them all, but I'll talk about some notable snakes, some snakes that are notable in the toxicities that their venom can, can exert, um, either very severe or less severe, because there are certain of the pit vipers, the, um, the crotalids, 
that tend to have less severe uh, manifestations. And then there are different types that have more severe manifestation. And the crotalids, there are very specific species that have venom that is very unique and is not characteristic of what we typically find, or what we typically see in pit viper envenomation. So uh, pit vipers, the, the, uh, the crotalids, have a very different kind of uh, morphology to them. They kind of have an arrowhead shape uh, to their, their head. Um, it it, it kind of bulks out a little bit um, toward the distal part of it. And uh, they have a very pointy, pointy snout. Um, they have a very elliptical cat eye like pupil. Um, it's highly elliptical. And then they have these large uh, kind of between their, uh, their pupil, their eyes, and their nostrils. They have this large open area here. Um, and this is a pit. And what this does is it can actually detect infrared light that comes from uh, different animals. And of course, infrared light happens to be heat. Heat tends to transmit in the uh, longer wavelengths, the red infrared uh, wavelengths, so uh, wave, wavelengths you know, longer than about 700 nanometers or thereabouts. Um, so, and that actually is an advantage because these snakes can actually hunt, you know, things like uh, my, mice and rats and things like that, and they can detect their heat, and that allows them to hunt. And there's actually a reflex that these these particular snakes, these crotalids have, where even after the head has been severed from the body um, for a certain amount of time, there's a reflex that can occur, and if those pits detect heat, um, it can still cause that snake to, um, uh, that, that head uh, to uh, strike and potentially um, bite and envenomate um, victims. Now, the biting, the biting between the elapids and the crotalids, and you know what? I should just show you a picture. <laughs> so here is a classic of what we would expect for a pit viper or a crotalid, and you can see it has this pointy snout here. You can see how it has this really this arrowhead shaped um, head to it, where it kind of bulks out here. Um, you have these uh, characteristic pits here, um, and so you can see these these particular snakes really do have a very characteristic uh, look to them. Now, when it comes to the, the the patterns, the bite patterns of these these two snakes, um, the the uh, the crotalins have a, a very very well defined um, fangs, two large fangs that can retract, and so when you bite, you will see um, typically you will see very characteristic you know fang marks, and tend to, people tend to get bit either on the hands, the arms, or the feet and the legs because either you're playing around with a snake and you get bit in your hand or you're hiking along and, and it just happens by uh, serendipitously or anti-serendipitously as the case may be. Um, so that contrasts a little bit from the uh, elapids, from the, the coral snakes where the coral snakes are really, first of all, they're very reclusive types of snakes. Um, so you really kind of have to try hard to get bit by them. But let's say you try hard, they kind of get in and they grind. And, and, and so the bite pattern is, is kind of a, a round pattern with several, several little holes where the, the teeth kind of go in. So they have to kind of get in there, bite and grind a little bit to, to really get the venom in you, whereas the, um, the crotalids can come in, bite, they, they have control. Of, of their fangs, their fangs come in, boom, bite, and so you'll see that characteristic fang mark. Um, so that's kind of the difference. Uh, the types of venom that we see, the elapid, uh, at least here in the United, in North America, the uh, elapid venom, okay, the coral snakes in particular, tends to be highly neurotoxic. That's our primary concern, highly neurotoxic venom. Whereas um, the crotalids, here, the crotalids uh, classically have proteolytic venom. Uh, so, uh, when you have a severe bite by a, a snake like this, okay, a coral snake, your primary concern is going to be collapse of the respiratory system due to um, the uh, neuromuscular system not being able to work very efficiently due to 
the, the basic mechanisms that I've already discussed earlier, whereas these, the crotalin bites, uh, tend to be more uh, hemotoxic. These particular patients tend to develop coagulopathies. They tend to develop lots of swelling, tissue breakdown at the site. So they get bit in the hand, their hand will swell. They can get necrosis, they can develop coagulopathies. They can develop rhabdomyolysis from the uh, release of myoglobin from uh, muscle that has uh, broken down and that can cause renal failure, et cetera. Now there are very specific types of snakes that fall into the crotalin category that have venom that is markedly more neurotoxic than other types of snakes and we'll talk about those in just a little more detail. Uh, today I just kind of wanted to give you a brief overview um, now, I should say that within the crotalid, okay, so within the pit vipers, um, the major types of snakes that you run into are going to be rattlesnakes, okay? So if it has a rattle in North America, it's one of these guys, okay? So you have rattlesnakes, and that can include things like the western diamondback, um, the sidewinder, okay? Um, the timber rattlesnake, the Mojave rattle, the Pacific uh, rattlesnake, all of those uh, Western Diamondback, all of those particular uh, snakes are rattlesnakes. They are all pit vipers. In addition to that, um, uh, the water moccasins or cottonmouths are also, they're not necessarily rattlesnakes, but they um, are still pit vipers. So they are still um, in the crotalin, uh, the crotalin genus. Um, however, they, have, they are in a different subfamily than, than the others. And we'll talk about Perhaps we'll talk about that in just a little more detail if, if any of you are interested. And actually, I'm working on a little PowerPoint where I'm uh, putting some different uh, photographs of very specific snakes in there because when I start talking about the venom, um, I'm going to be referencing specific types of snakes. And so it's just helpful to have a general clue of what the heck I'm talking about. Okay, guys, I think I'm going to cut it off here uh, and hopefully you've enjoyed the video. As always, thanks for hanging in there.